I'm giving you guys some of the best budget PC builds this year, and also some pretty crazy overkill systems as well, but I haven't done anything in between. So with that said, for the holidays and to wrap up the year, I'm gonna be building a beautiful, balanced, high-end PC that will handle any game you throw at it at 1440p max settings, as well as 4K. But more importantly, this is gonna be the perfect system for a workstation setup as well. So if streaming and content creation are your focus, alongside gaming, and you like the whole white aesthetic, then this is the PC you need to build. Protect your PC like the Pentagon with the Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office. From the accidental coffee spill to the lurking dangers of malware and ransomware, they've got you covered for any type of data loss. One click, that's all it takes to back up your entire PC, cloud storage, and mobile devices. But that's not all. Acronis's AI integrated security ensures your computer and data are safe from cyber criminals. You can sleep tight knowing that your photos, important files, and secret homework folder won't be accessed and abused by a third party. Every file you touch is scanned for hidden threats. In other words, in a world where data is king, Acronis is the knight in shining armor. You can choose between three plans. We got essentials for secure backups and robust protection, advanced for added AI security and cloud access, or premium for complete digital protection with blockchain technology and electronic signatures. Exclusively just for my subscribers, Acronis is offering 50% off all plans. So click the link below and use the code TechSource at checkout to secure the discount and safeguard your data today. The total price of this entire build is a little under $2,800, but that does include everything even the extra power supply cables and the Windows 11 Pro key, which I picked up for $20 instead of paying the crazy $200 price tag straight from Microsoft. I was able to get away with this thanks to yourcdkey.com, which is where I get all the keys for my PC builds. They sell Windows 10 Pro keys for $15 and Windows 11 Pro keys for $20. Using the code TS20 will get you an extra 28% off during the month of December. And after purchasing it, they will send you the key and all you have to do is go into the activation settings and put it in to get rid of the watermark. So for the processor, I went with the Intel i7-14700K just to show Team Blue a little bit of love because all my budget builds this year were Team Red. However, I will give you guys an AMD version of this exact same PC later in this video if that is the route you guys wanna take. But anyways, going back to the CPU, I wanted to go with the latest offering from Team Blue, so that's why I opted for the 14700K instead of the 13700K. We do get slightly higher turbo clocks, but more importantly, we get four additional E-cores and four threads, which make a huge difference in heavy workloads. In fact, if you guys look at the multi-core benchmarks, the 14700K dominates the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D processor across the board. The 14700K is an exceptional CPU when it comes to heavy workloads. The only drawback is that it consumes way more power. However, for strictly gaming, it's a no-brainer that the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is the better CPU. It desecrates, even on the 14900K in the gaming benchmarks. So if you're building a strictly gaming PC and you do hate Intel, then the 7800X 3D is the better choice for the CPU. So with that said, I'll drop a link to that, as well as a motherboard and memory sticks that I recommend pairing with that AMD CPU if that's the route you guys wanna take. Now for the motherboard, I knew I didn't wanna cheap out this time. Um, I wanted something with dual 8-pin EPS connectors, that way we can maximize the power output from the CPU socket. Also something that has built-in Wi-Fi, and just a good-looking board that will complement our color scheme. I wasn't looking for just white accents on the board. In fact, I wanted everything to be white, including the PCB. Those are harder to find. The Aura's Elite AX Ice was actually my first choice, but that doesn't support 14 gen CPUs out of the box. So I went for the refreshed version, the Aura's Pro X instead. But you can definitely save a lot of money by going with an older Z790 board and just flashing the BIOS to support 14 gen CPUs. Now the 14700K does run a bit toasty, so we need a capable cooler to tame the beast. I went with the Eskimo Junior 36 because of its triple high performance 120mm fans that provides excellent cooling at low noise. Plus, I do love the minimalistic pump design with subtle RGB lights. Now for memory, I went with 32 gigs of the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neos in matte white. These are 6000 MHz CL30 sticks and they are Intel XMP 3.0 ready, meaning they are guaranteed to achieve a stable overclock when you enable XMP in the BIOS. 
It is highly recommended to go with at least a 5600 megahertz rated kit to make sure you guys are not losing out on gaming performance. We do have a higher budget to work with this time, so it makes sense to expand the storage from the usual one terabyte. This two terabyte drive from Crucial is running on PCI Gen 4 speeds and it's priced very well. The graphics card I went with this time is the Gigabyte Aero RTX 4080 because not only will it fit perfectly with the color scheme of the build, but it's also going to handle any game we toss at it in 1440p max settings and 4K resolution. But Ed, why don't you just go with the RX 700 XTX? It's proven that is the faster card and it's a lot cheaper too. Well, you're not wrong. If you're looking for pure rasterization performance and you wanna save money in the process, I do recommend going with the 7900 XTX. You can find one as low as $950 during the holidays. Compare that to the RTX 4080 prices, which are still at MSRP, if not more on some other board partners. You also get more VRAM with the 7900 XTX compared to the 4080. I mean, not that anything matters past 16 gigs anyway, since no game utilizes more than that, but it's still nice to have for future titles. However, DLSS performance has improved quite a bit over the past few years with driver updates. So if you take that into consideration, the 4080 is in fact faster than the 7900 XTX across all three resolutions. And since a lot of major games do support ray tracing with DLSS 3, it made sense to go with the RTX 4080 this time. Plus we were able to fit it in our budget. Hello. Look, daddy's recording. Look, you're actually matching the, the PC's color scheme. Look at that. You're matching the PC's color scheme. That's so cool. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, see what you did? You dropped the box. Daddy, daddy, eat the blue. Mm-hmm. Say bye-bye. Now, if our budget was only $2,500, then I would have easily made the switch to the 7900 XTX because of the value. But ultimately, it comes down to your choice, right? That's the beauty about doing these builds is that you can choose whichever parts you wanna go with based on your budget. So I'll drop a link to a few 7900 XTX models that I recommend going with if that's the route you guys wanna take. 850 watts is plenty of juice to power the system, and there are a plethora of beautiful white theme power supplies to choose from, some even at $100. But for the sake of reliability and consistency, I'm going with the Gigabyte UD850GM in white. It's fully modular, gold certified, and supports PCI 5 graphics cards. Even though the cables themselves are in white, they are not braided and they don't have any cable combs. So I picked up a nice set of extensions from Amazon, and also picked up this PCI 5.0 cable extension specifically for the GPU. This one has a shroud built in, which will prevent the cable from getting damaged. And plus it just looks much nicer than the stock PCI 5 cable. And lastly, let's talk about the case because this is clearly the centerpiece of it all. This is the King 95 Pro by Montec, a company that's been making serious waves over the past few years. Their latest creation is the King 95 series. This sports a beautiful dual chamber design with two four millimeter tempered glass panels, one of which is curved, providing a nice rounded edge with clear view into your system. It's basically an O11 Mini, but with a curved glass. It comes in four different flavors and two versions. The regular King 95 comes with no fans pre-installed, but for just $40 more, you get the upgraded Pro version, and this comes with six pre-installed fans and a fan hub in the back that allows you to plug up to 10 fans. Honestly, you get way more value this way. The bottom fans are set as intake with reverse blades, so you still get to see the RGB lights without the nasty cable being visible. The same goes for the side 140 millimeter fans, and then there's one exhaust in the back. Unfortunately, with this configuration, you are getting a lot of positive pressure in the case. Personally, I would have flipped the two side fans so that it can help exhaust some of the hot air out. And that way the case would have had a more balanced neutral pressure, but I haven't really seen anything alarming during the gaming benchmarks, which we'll go over in a bit. The case also supports a buttload of storage devices. You can replace the bottom three fans with three hard drives or SSDs using the included bracket. You can also add up to four SSDs in the back and two additional drives in the pullout cage. So lots of room for storage if that's what you're into. As you can see here, the case does support a 360 radiator very easily with room to breathe. But if 280s are more your style, you can also do that for the top and the side. But here's what's so cool about this case. You have the option of swapping the front glass panel with the included mesh panel. And you can rotate the fan mount to take advantage of that. 
If you do this, then you open up more space in the back to add up to three more 120mm fans or dual 140s. Now in terms of front I.O., you get two USB 3 ports and one USB Type-C, along with a button that lets you cycle between a few color effects. But you can also plug the cable into the motherboard's RGB header and control the lights through the software instead. And with all that out of the way, let's game.
Very impressive performance as expected. The 14700K pairs so beautifully with the RTX 4080, but the star of the show is still the case. I really love the look of the King 95 and the value that you get from the Pro version is hard to pass up. There were a few small issues that I experienced, like the top two clips arriving broken. Because of this, one side of the top panel was not secured to the case and it was easily lifted. Also, the two glass panels don't exactly meet together in the corner seamlessly. One side is slightly lower than the other and it is noticeable to me. Now, since the top two clips arrived broken, I'm going to assume that this case was somehow damaged in the shipping process. So this isn't something that you should expect. In fact, here is what a brand new case should look like that isn't damaged during the shipping process. You can see that both glass panels are perfectly aligned. All right, let's talk temps. Despite the wacky fan configuration, both the CPU and GPU surprisingly stayed very cool across all the games I've played, staying well under 70 degrees Celsius. The only time the CPU peaked over 70 was in Apex Legends, with the CPU hitting 76 degrees, which is normal because Apex always stresses the CPU the most out of all the other competitive titles. I'm actually very impressed that the fans were able to move air effectively through the case even with the least effective fan configuration. But if you guys want slightly lower temps, I would recommend going with the mesh panel. This will effectively lower the temps by an average of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. Nonetheless, I'll drop a link to everything I used in the build down below along with the case. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.